e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. We have a Rai Lopez. And um, Paul Morphy's defense. Columbus variation. Knight f6, castles, knight takes e4 is the open variation. Now d4, b5, bishop b3, d5, d takes, bishop e6. All that is the main line of the open variation of Morphy's defense of the Spanish opening. And this, queen e2, is Clarence Howell's attack. If you don't know who Clarence Howell is, he was an American chess master way back. That uh, He was a New York State champion in 1909. You can read about him. Clarence Howell. In this particular um, move is recorded in the Encyclopedia of Chess Openings with his name attached to it. Bishop to c5, and after bishop e3, we depart from the ECO. Volume C, section 81. After castles, c3 is the most common move here. Um, although I, I can't really fully appreciate why c3 would be the most common move. Probably just prevents ideas of bringing this knight in here anywhere. I would gather. Uh, so, but rook d1 was played in this particular line, which I guess also answers any ideas of bringing the knight in. Now, knight to a5 is not the most common move in the database. Bishop takes, followed by queen takes. But knight a5. And again, neither of these guys are following the common thinking. Here in this position, white more frequently captures the bishop. Okay, but knight b to d2. Now bishop takes bishop, queen takes bishop. Knight takes knight, and rook takes knight. And uh, yeah, c3 also allows bishop c2, somebody's mentioning. It's not strictly proactive. But c3 is played here at this point. And after queen to c7, um, are there, they, we're down to four moves, four games in the database that have reached this position. Two of them, rook to e1 was played. One of them, h3 was played. In this game, knight d4 was played. In all four cases, white emerged victorious. The bishop's not really in danger. It would be an equal trade. And after um, knight to d4, by the way, we are in a unique position that appears nowhere else in the database, but right here before your eyeballs. So pawn to c4, attacking the knight, knight to e2, moving to safety, rook f to d8, helping to support the push of this pawn. Rook a to d8, helping to thwart the push of that pawn. Look at how many people white has aiming at d4. That pawn's not going anywhere, anytime, ever. Knight takes rook, uh, bishop, pawn takes knight. 
Pawn to a5, queenside expansion galore. We have a big old bulldozer coming down here. Whoa! Knight to f4. Now we have a super attack against this pawn with three attackers. Black only has two defenders, and as you know, if you have more attackers than defenders, you know what's coming. Overpower! Oh, yeah. C4. Totally ignores the threat. Knight takes pawn, bishop takes knight, rook takes a uh, bishop, and pawn takes pawn is a horrific blunder. Somebody tell me, don't give me a move yet, but tell me what's the most important tactical theme that exists on the chessboard right now? What is, type it in there, I want a tactical theme in the chat. Don't give me any moves. Nobody give a move. If you give a move, there will be a penalty. But if you can tell me the most important tactical theme that exists on the chessboard right here, you will get a grand surprise, a once-in-a-lifetime surprise, a surprise like no other surprise that you'll get anywhere on any other channel because there's no other channel like this channel anywhere near this channel. This has got to be the channel. Somebody smell me. Ah, no, don't smell me. Tell me what is the tactical theme that is important here. Oh, we got somebody named Thanks Rocho. <laughs> <laughs> That's Fune. Anybody, anybody, anybody. Yuval says the rook and the queen have to defend the rook. Don't I told you no moves. I said ooh, Rochkopf. You are the recipient of a dirty look. Arr! I said, don't give me moves. Give me the theme. Theme. So double rook is a good guess. But what I was looking for is back rank weakness. Back rank weakness. Pawn takes pawn totally overlooks the back rank weakness that exists here. And for that reason, yeah, queen to a7 forces a resignation because as you can see, the rook can't take the queen because of checkmate. The queen can't take the queen because of checkmate. And there's nothing else that can happen. If you try to um, defend, what could he maybe do? What if he plays here? Well, that's not gonna work. because you're just losing your rook. And again, you have the same checkmate threat coming up. Back rank weakness is what we were looking for. Nobody got the grand surprise. Rochop got a dirty look, <laughs> but this was nice. And it's not all that easy to see unless you really appreciate the gravity of this back rank weakness but recognizing that these rooks cannot defend the back rank weakness adequately without the queen's help white realized therefore that 
both of Honfi's pieces are overworked. I would have also accepted overworked pieces here, which is kind of what um, Yuval Oops, I turned tutu into doo-doo. <laughs> it's kind of what Yuval was saying, although didn't use the terminology. Yuval, what Yuval described was essentially uh, describing the fact that both the rook and the queen are overworked. Now, how often do you have two overworked pieces that you can stand in front of both of the overworked pieces and neither of the pieces can take you because they're both overworked. That's a great move in chess. That move gets not one, not two, but three exclamation points on my notation sheet. That's a beauty. <laughs> and uh, Honfi had to resign. What a gorgeous move, what a gorgeous game.